done it not only once, I've been shot at a number of times in a number of places around the world, and every time God has miraculously saved my life. This is, this is God's Word. So John, it says not just John talking, it's not just the Holy Ghost yes. talking. God is talking. Eating up the stories that he would tell of his missions and ministry, and it would build my faith. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Everyone, God bless you today. We are so thankful you have joined us here at Terry Mize Ministries More Than Conquerors program. <laughs> and it's been a lot of years conquering, hasn't it, darling? Oh, yeah. Still conquering. <laughs> Still conquering. And we are just talking to you today here uh, from the beautiful state of Ohio, uh, my actual birthplace state. I wasn't born far from here. And um, Terry and I are here at probably... Our favorite convention all year long is the uh, oh, yeah. Missions Convention here in, in Eaton, Ohio, at Pastor Ken and Angel Harbaum's Church, Covenant of Peace. And it's just amazing. I mean, missionaries from all over the world. Oh, yeah. We look forward to this meeting every year. Yes. We've been coming here. I've been coming here for decades and decades. Yeah. And then you've been coming here the last 10 years. Last 10. And uh, just missionaries come in from around the world. Mm -hmm. and. and uh, it's just a great conference. We look forward to it every year, every year. It's a, it's a beautiful time of the year to come because of the trees are all turning. Oh, yeah. And it's just gorgeous reds and golds Last and yellows. Last week of October. And, yeah, mustards and <laughs> colors all around and then all these variegated shades of, of even green and all the different uh, things that are here to see as far as the, the beautiful, beautiful foliage around this part of the country. And this little church sits out here in the most, it's a farming community, mm -hmm. and on one side of the church <clears throat> is a cornfield, and on the other side is this beautiful old cemetery. And uh, then here's this swath of, of a church with all paid for buildings, and uh, just an amazing sense of hospitality, and how they care for the missionaries. And then Terry and Mark Barkley come here every year and speak, and it's just been a phenomenal experience. I mean, heart, warming not not just because of the atmosphere that christianity you know <clears throat> entails but it's all about going to the world it's your yeah it's and i the think probably you and i you most. and i are probably so biased yeah <laughs> because this is the closest this is thing this is true that either one of us has seen uh since the old days at john osteen's lakewood church in houston that's right uh john osteen's joel's daddy and um, Brother John always had, for years and years and years, had yeah. a missions convention missions, at Thanksgiving. Missions convention. I spent many a Thanksgiving in Houston at Lakewood no Church. And, uh, Didn't and, and it, it, it was just the cream of the crop, the best of the best right. uh, missionary conference. That's right. And uh, this conference here is, is the closest thing to that. So That's I think right. you and I get real nostalgic about it. I feel like we're coming home. And, and most churches don't have That's missions right. conferences anymore. And even pastors that, that try to or want to or have it in their heart to do something, they really don't know how because right. they've not seen anybody do it. So right. I teach them sometimes. I mean, even some of the guys that uh, like Wayne Myers, my spiritual dad, is 102 now. He used to show people how, and, right. and now he's not around. I mean, he's still living, but he doesn't come to the States anymore and doesn't right. go preach in churches. So, you know, I, I've taught some churches how to do it, and so there's a few. But right. th this is just an outstanding conference. And, it really uh, is. Not only do missionaries come, Pastor Ken uh, pays their expenses yes. once they get here. He, he pays for their hotel uh, and their food. And so uh, uh, another thing he does is so great and so wonderful is that he has the convention budget and expenses paid for and out of the way right. before the mission, before, before the, the conference. Ever so therefore, 100 percent of all the offerings that come in from Sunday to Wednesday, uh, all the offerings go to the missionaries. That's right. So none of it goes to expenses because he's already paid the expenses. 
So such an honorable thing and a wonderful really thing. Is. And, and the Ken's been on the program with us here before. We've talked to him on a Zoom meeting. Some of y'all may have seen that. And it's just a great church. And of course, Ken's got a missions heart and, a, and he takes a lot of mission trips himself. That's right. Uh, uh, every year. And so um, he's uh, just a, a good friend, good guy. And we look forward to this conference every year. It, it almost gets, you, you know, we're pe pastors and church people are always talking about uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, where Paul says, uh, God uh, blesses the cheerful giver. And then the Amplified right. Bible says, is unwilling to do without, do without. A, a prompt to do it quick uh, with their hearts and their giving. Right. And, and so hilarious. And so this church, like by Wednesday night, it starts on Sunday night and go, <laughs> Wednesday night ends. It's like Wednesday night. The people are just so hilarious. It is. They're giving money and giving money and giving money. And you, oh my the last goodness. three years in a row or maybe four, we hadn't even been able to preach on Wednesday night. Right. Just because people are giving to the missionaries and picking yeah. up projects and stuff. You know, somebody will say, well, what's your need? Well, we're, we're in Zimbabwe, Africa, and we need yeah. a water well. Right. And somebody will say, well, I'll pay for that. Or somebody will say, well, I'll give $100 to it. Or, you know, you and I love water wells, so right. we pick those up a lot. And uh, so it's just always kind of a, a hilarious, wild time of, it is. of it's, giving it's just, to missions. It's almost like a, it's <coughs> almost in one sense like an auctioning. It's yeah, got almost, a, yeah. It's, it's got a little feel to that. Somebody's shouting out, I'll give 5000 I'll pay for that, I'll, I'll get that. Uh, uh, Terry, I want half of that. Don't yeah. pay for all that, I'll pay yeah, half of right. it. And during this conference, it's just a... a Fabulous. I mean, amazing time to bless a lot of people. Oh, it's I tremendous. I mean, people come from all over the world here, Africa, Asia, China. I mean, we've got India, uh, Nepal. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, we've sure. got the islands of the Burma, sea. Burma, all, Burma we've Thailand. Got, yeah, yeah. Then we've got all of Central and South America. You know, two years ago, <laughs> we invited our dear friends, uh, Patty and James, James Akui, Akui. And here they're working in the South Pacific. They've got, they've got ministry in, in Samoa and in American Samoa and in Fiji and in Vanuatu. And yeah. In, and yeah, in, Pago, and Pago. in uh, well, but Pago Pago was American, American Samoa. Samoa. I mean, yeah. so you know, there's just people from all over everywhere. And then we invited Guinea Anderson last year, a good yeah. missionary they friend go that all goes over to the world. all over the world, has <laughs> orphanages in, in in Thailand and yeah. in Cambodia and, and Vietnam. And, and then in we India. had Don Close from Don Zambia. Don Close from Zambia uh, came, I and mean, we've just got people here now. Uh, during th this particular meeting from just so many places in and the And we also, you and I, I mean, you're such a cheerleader anyway, but we almost every church we go to to preach during the <laughs> year, you're telling, telling the pastor, hey, you need to come to the conference. You need to come to the missions conference. This I wish true. every pastor could come because then they would get yeah. a feel. Brother Osteen used to tell me, you know, right in and he'd tell you, you and Dean, um, tell every pastor you meet right. that they ought to go to the mission fields three times a year and not preach. Brother Osteen always say, tell them not yeah, to preach. Tell them not to preach. They tell them to feel the pulse beat of a lost and dying sense of world. Right. Let the missionary right. preach because that, he's anointed. That's, that's his field. Let yeah. him do it. That you're supporting. You feel the pulse beat of a lost and dying right. sense world. Right. You come back and impart that to your church. Exactly. And, and so it's important to let the pastors come to a convention like this mm -hmm. and get a, get a feel right. for the mission's um, atmosphere. Exactly. That they haven't experienced before. Right. They and believe in it. They just hadn't experienced it before. That's and true. And then they can go back and impart that to their church. Well, to me... Mm -hmm. It's just intelligence that if it's the if it's the only commission the that only has commission, been given the great in the commission. Word of God yep. is to go into all the world and preach the gospel, then you need to know the geography mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the heartbeat of how God is doing that through a whole cachet of people that are unsung heroes Absolutely. of the of the gospel that you would never know anything about phenomenal works that they are doing oh, impossible works missionaries that you won't hear from until you get to heaven exactly but they'll have a star in their crown oh my they won't have goodness. a tv ministry or a big you know speak at a big convention no. but but when we get to heaven they'll have a star in their crown if you had if you had a real journalistic <laughs> reporter someone who really knew how to report on missionaries and what they're doing around the world, they would put TV off the air because the stories are so dramatic. Oh, tremendous. And they're tremendous. so supernatural. We, of we've what got God missionaries that live, in, live right on the Amazon on River the Amazon. in the jungles of Peru. And, and floated, floated an entire huge boat all the way from Minnesota, Minnesota all the way Duluth. down to the Amazon and have four generations living down mm -hmm. there now. Yeah. And the grandparents yeah. just passed away in the last two yeah. years. Can you and imagine they, getting on a houseboat? 
and that it's now they're into, it from Duluth, Minnesota. Yeah, now all the way got through the airplanes. Atlantic and all the way down to New Mexico <laughs> and all the way down past Central America and all the way into South America into oh, Peru into the Amazon Peru, River. All the things that they're doing, all the things that they have done in the midst of some of the greatest trials of their lives, they have dealt with things that have that have just could have set anybody home, oh, set yeah. them home. They're just, but they're, they're just, just tough. They're just and. And I don't doing think, their job. I think the American church is extremely far behind and terribly naive right. yes. about all of these things that are to be. going on. And we have got to wake up the church, wake up the, the ministry, wake up the mighty men, which is the pastors and the sure. leaders and the people of God that, that have, you have an understanding, you have an intelligence, you have, you have an, you know, an education and you've got a church and you've got a congregation and, and we're still, uh, you know, fighting over if we're going to give to missions or not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and and what has been and, so and, and, and making missions the priority. Yeah, right. Because so many churches, they believe in missions. Right. But they say, hey, I'm a pastor. I got I got things. I got bills at home. Right. I need to do a parking lot. I need to do a Sunday school room. Yeah. I need to do a roof on the church. I need new air conditioning. <laughs> and so missions kind of gets left out. When Brother Osteen always said, make it first. Give to missions if you don't give to anything else. If you can't even pay your bills, That's right. Brother Osteen used to say, give to missions. That's right. Because then God will bless you. When I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he, was, he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that. I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the, I'm, I'm embracing this. And I right there made a vow to God and to myself. And I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give because it's the very nature of God. So I want to encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church. You can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager. And I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle of God, living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you. Yeah. You know, Brother Hagen said to me many decades ago, Dad Hagen, you know this. He said, Terry, he said, back when all pastors were in denominations, right. he said, we were denominational preachers then. And Brother Hagen was in the Assemblies of God and, and different pastors, you know. And he said, uh, we all knew we needed to do missions. Everybody knows you got to do missions. Right. You're supposed to do missions. It's right. not a choice. It's not right. an option. You have to do it. Old Testament and new, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. He said, but headquarters, because we we're in denominations, headquarters told mm -hmm. us what to do. Yeah. And so they said, buy this missionary a car, and we right. did, or a Jeep, or a, or a, right. a tent, or build a church, or, right. or send a project. Well, and, and they send out a letter yeah. that would say, we're going to, we, we, we want to raise, we want to raise $300,000, and we want to raise we wanna give to these particular works. Right. And so we ask you to contribute right. a lump sum and, and we'll divide and it up And he said headquarters them. told us what to do and we were happy right. to do it. Right. Everybody was happy to do it. And the pastors were happy to do it. He said, but now that it, everybody's pretty much out of denominations and they're right. independent or full gospel or charismatic mm -hmm. or whatever, word of faith, whatever you want to hang on it. He said, there's not a headquarters. Right. And he said, so we all still know we're supposed to do missions. Right. We just don't know what to do. And he said, most pastors, since they don't know what to do, they do mm -hmm. nothing or they just go on and trip themselves. Right. And he said, he said, you need to preach missions everywhere at every convention we have and every meeting we have. He said, so you become the headquarters. You tell the pastors what to do and where to put the money and how. And so I did that for many, many years in an organization he and I were, were both in because pastors know they're supposed to do missions, want right. to do missions. Right. They just don't know what to do. And well, so coming here is just such a wonderful oh, start, it's so refreshing. A, a kick start for them. So refreshing. What happens when, when a pastor, God bless them. Uh, but doesn't know what to do. It's kind of like it was in the days of, of, of Joshua and Judges. The yeah, Judges. Every, every man <laughs> did that no which was right. Israel. Everybody did that which was right in his own eyes, and everybody just picks out something to do. 
Whereas if we get this concept in your mind that the local church, it, your job is to, is to really be a bastion for a whole lot of things that God's trying to do in the earth on a local sure. basis. You're gonna be discipling people all the time oh, because you're bringing people in. You're showing them how to follow Jesus and how to be disciples. Then you're showing them how to win souls. Sure. Then you're showing them how to do outreach because sure. you're going to the city, you're going sure. into the ghettos, you're going sure. to the neighborhoods, you're going to the to the, the children's, you know, the places downtown, the homeless shelters right. and things like that. But then you're also going to the world. And what's so amazing to me, Terry, we see so many times is that people want to choose either or. It's like people that want to talk about voting. They want to say, well, my job is just to pray. And then I, it, and they say, I don't vote. I just pray. And you can hold two thoughts in your head at the same time. You can pray and vote. You can do the, the spiritual and the natural, right, right. and that'll equal wisdom, and, you know? And you know, for decades, Renee, uh, churches have used me as a vetting right. office. Exactly. They'll say, Brother Terry, what about, you know, somebody in Thailand, you know, somebody in Burma, you know, somebody in this country, yeah. this country, uh, what do you think about this missionary? And, right. I, and I'll literally go check them out, because if I happen to be in that part of the world. Exactly. And so so we're given to good places, not just fly-by-night places. Right. But right. but missions is probably one of the most misunderstood things in exactly. in the ministry because people feel like anybody can do it. And that's just not true. God has anointed missionaries, anointed, anointed apostles very godly, going. Faithful, uh, and so, tough so, so when a pastor doesn't know what to do, then that's he right. just takes eight or 10 people out of his church and he goes and preaches somewhere in some country and they think they did a missions trip. You know, or they take the young people and go paint yeah, some houses and you know, think they did a mission trip. Which is good, great, great, great. But those things are really evangelical outreaches. outreaches church, yeah. Every church should have an outreach. I go exactly. to the poor part of town and paint houses. Yeah. But that's really not missions, yet churches call it missions. Right. Because they don't know what to do. It's, it's, it's been so many years right. since anybody told them what it really is that yeah, they just a very do like you said what's right in their own eyes exactly. so you know you can call our office and we'll we'll vet somebody for you or we'll give you some advice on on where to go and what to do you've had you've had pastors through the years say call you and say uh, brother terry i've had haiti on my heart exactly brother terry i've had mexico on my heart brother terry i've really been praying over india mm -hmm. and they'd say you know i've got this much missions money would you consider oh, going like that all the time and go and and take and and do a, a ministry in india and i'll give you twenty thousand right. dollars if you'll go do right. that or I'll oh, they'll give say you, do you know a missionary that we can send some money to we could send some money to you know, there's always, you, you can do both. Say that out loud. I can do both. Yep. I can believe God for the parking lot of my local church, yep. <laughs> and yep. I can give to that, and I can give to missions too. Right. But but that's why you have to be prosperous. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to believe God for abundance. That's why the desires of your heart, you have to let God give you the desires of your exactly. heart. Because he wants you to bless everybody oh, that yeah. you that he yeah. sends across your path. Well, you, that he is, he's, if he's leading you to give to a homeless person, then you've got to have the cash and the resources to do that. That's right. They if, don't take credit cards. No, and if and if he's trying to get you to help some uh, a single mom who needs you know a month's worth of groceries, then and you've got five hundred dollars, you could give her to do that. God wants you to have that. One hundred dollars. And if your pastor is trying to build something like he needs he needs all new. Uh, baby beds for the nursery yeah, or carpet, or the, you know, they need carpet for the church. They're, they're, they're trying to raise $25,000 to, to pave the parking lot. You can do both. Then you hear from a missionary in Zimbabwe that needs a water well mm -hmm. and it's going to cost $7,000. You give to it all. Sure. You know, I mean, to and me, people, that's, that's a whole purpose for the process. Like you've taught out of first John you know, sure. two over there, that sure. it's to help the brethren. Third John. Third John, too, to help the, I don't know why I didn't say, say that, uh, that is to minister to the brethren. Right. And, Beloved, I wish above all things you yeah. may prosper and be in health so that you can do good to the brethren, good to the strangers, and be fellow helper to the truth. Verse two and verse five and verse eight. See, that's it right there. See, the Bible's a missions book, and my partners, y'all know this, some of you followed me and partnered with me for years, and, and I say the Bible's a missions book. It's all a missions book. That's right. And, and, and the church doesn't realize that some of their favorite scriptures that they just confess and quote all the time are really <laughs> mission scriptures. Yes, it's kind of like are. the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. You know, Christians, little charismatic ladies everywhere <laughs> say, oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. We used to even yeah. sing. Well, and we, we make used to even it so sing dumb, shallow when we, we say it like that. We used to even sing dumb songs in the church like, if you want joy, you got to jump 
for it. And if you want joy, you got to mm-hmm. shout for it. And if you yeah. want joy, you got to dance for it. Yeah. But that, that's not what the Bible says. Nehemiah 8.10, where they get that scripture, is a missionary so, scripture. Uh, it actually says, go your way, yeah. eat, eat the, the fat, fat, drink, drink the, the sweet. sweet. In other words, you be blessed, you be yeah. prospered, yes. you eat the fat, you drink the sweet. It's not either Then or. send portions to them it's for whom nothing is both. prepared, missions. Yes. And then the joy of the Lord will be your strength. So if you want the Isn't joy of the Lord phenomenal? to be your strength, you got to get involved in missions. You, you need to be blessed, eat the fat. You need to be blessed, drink the sweet. You need to send portions to them from whom nothing is prepared, missions. They don't have anything. They're sitting there waiting. Somebody give us the gospel. <laughs> and then the joy of the Lord. Be, and there's no greater joy than you getting somebody saved. That's God's formula for success, Terry. Or scriptures like Jeremiah eight twenty, when the, the sinners had to sing that same old sad song. If they're going to sing again yeah. one of these days, yeah. they said, the summer's, summer's passed. passed. The harvest has ended, ended and we're, and not, we're saved. not saved. The summer's passed. The harvest has ended Jesus. and we're not saved. Wow. And then John 17 in the New Testament, everybody just raves about John 17 being the unity script chapter. <laughs> oh, unity, unity, unity. Jesus said, we'll all be one. Oh, let's oh, all be one. Just, that's, that's a so missionary. Shallow. That's a missionary scripture. Yes. Jesus actually says, Lord, let, let's all be one so that the, the world, world may nice know, know that you sent, sent me. me. God wants the world to know that he sent Jesus and you can come to heaven and be with him. It says it three times during that scripture in, in Isn't John. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, and, and it ends up saying, saying you and me and me and you and, and them and us and all <laughs> be perfect in one that the world, the world may, may know, know you have sent me and has loved them as you love me. Missions. It's all missions. This book is a missions book. And, and I just say again, the church dumbs it down and we make it shallow, flippant, foolish sounding. Oh, yeah. And it and this is so powerful that it literally, when you get a heart for the world, God has to give you the resources to go to the world. Absolutely. He has to give you the health to go to the world. The promises in the word of God are for health <laughs> mm-hmm. and for and for prosperity. And the whole reason for abundance is so you can be a blessing to other people. I mean, and I I thought that when I first heard the Word of Faith message back in my early 20s, I thought, well, I don't need all that. I, you know, right. I'll be happy with this or that. And I've had and people it, tell me that, but I don't need prosperity. I'm doing great. That's what shame on you. It's not yeah, for you. No, that's it. It's not for you. <laughs> that's it. You dumb it down to where it's your for and no more and my life and how I feel and my emotions and my thinking. And it's all and it's such an arrogant way to live. And yeah. people don't me, even me, realize me, me, me. people don't even realize they are so focus and their arrogance is keeping them from being a blessing to the world. Oh, absolutely. And it's just stupidity in you the know, bottom line. I was preaching for Fred Price one time. Fred's in heaven now, but he was a dear friend. I preached for him every year for over 20 yeah. years. And I did his missions conference for him every year. And one day we were at dinner and, and Fred said this, and this will, this will minister to you. Fred said, Terry, would you rather have $50,000, let me just hand you $50,000 right, right now on the table. Pow, there it is. Or would you rather have that same amount, $50,000, spread out over a year, monthly payments over a year? How would you rather have it? And I said, well, I'd like both. Well, he <laughs> laughed like you probably did. And I said, no, 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 I'm not kidding. That, I said, I, said, I, that I, said I have to have both. both, just like in your church, Believe you have God to have both. both. I said, I need project money. Yes. I said, if you give me 50000 right now, cash on the, on the table, I'll go do a project exactly. for $50,000. I'm going to do a pastor's conference, a crusade, open air crusade and get thousands of people <laughs> saved. I said, but I also have to pay my I rent and I, I pay my electricity both. and pay I my staff. I have to have monthly money. I said, in your church, Fred, you, you have to have project money, but you also take an offering every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every midweek service because you got to pay your staff. And your, he said, I never thought of that in all my life. And it changed his life. And he told people, I'm not talking about him behind his back. He got in the pulpit and told people, said, I talked to, it changed my life talking to Terry because I realized I have to have both. And he told me, he said, from now on, I've always been a partner, a project partner with you. I've sent you money for projects. From now on, he said, I'm sending you monthly money and project Project money. money. And Jerry Savelli even came to me one time and he, Jerry's a long time friend. Of course, he's in heaven now. And Jerry said to me one time, he said, Terry, I owe you an apology. I said, well, what in the world for? And he said, well, I hadn't been a good enough partner to you. And I said, yes, you have. Over the, he said, over the years. And I said, you've sent me money for years. And he said, yeah, but it should have been. He said, I've sent you some project money. But he said, I should have sent you money regularly every month, every month, every month, every month. And he said, from now on, I'll start doing that. And so the people get it, you know, but right. they don't think about it before. No, right. But you have to have project money to go do a project. Right. 
not go buy a Jeep or go buy, you know, something. Exactly. Uh, but you have to have that monthly steady um, income coming in all the time, too. So so there's people out there that like to do projects. I have partners that like right. to do projects. I said, Derek, if you're doing a project, let thank me know. You. If you're digging a water well, let me know. I'll help yeah, you pay for thank it. You. Thank and you. And others that say, I'm going to be a monthly partner. Right. Everyone, both to JMICF, Jackie Mize International Children's Foundation, that takes care of widows and orphans and humanitarian aid and disasters. And to Terry stuff. Mize Ministries, it goes and does crusades and right. church meetings. So, so missions, 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 missions. It's, I've always said missions isn't too important. It only costs God his son. And it's the only cause of Jesus his blood. It's the only commission. It's the only cause that counts. It's the supreme task of the church. Oh my. Well, you know the the uh, here we are um, in uh, Eaton, Ohio, and all these relationships, friendships, friendships, this entire meeting that you've developed all these years, and then me in recent years. It has just been an amazing experience to catch a fresh, new, I think, enlarged concept of how the gospel is being preached around the world and how it must be preached Absolutely. Uh, by many people. Ephesians 3 says, and we've just got a little bit of time here, but Ephesians 3.10, if you'll go read that in the Amplified, it says that, that this uh, plan that God has had, that he's wanted to do it through the church. Through the church. Through the church. And we are the church, the local church, the personal church, <laughs> the church worldwide the family of God. God's trying to use everybody to do one focused Absolutely. thing, and that is go to the world. So don't sell yourself short or act like it, this is a, a tack on agenda. And you, you can't know. opt out of the system. You can't opt out of it, because this, this is why you're on the earth, is to finish the work of the Lord Jesus, of going to the world yes. and preaching the gospel. So that's why you've done that for 56 years around the world, Terry Mize Ministries. Uh, preaching more than conquerors, spiritual authority, laying hands on the sick, all these wonderful things, miracles, our time is gone. <laughs> so we are more, more than, than conquerors. Bye-bye. You know, I have preached for over 50 years now that every believer is a missionary. You're either a goer, one who goes, or a sender, one who sends. And you can either be the one that goes to the jungles and eats the monkeys and eats the worms, or you can be the one that prays and sends the money to uh, let somebody else eat worms for you. What you need to realize is that we're on the same team. There's not a us against them. Uh, the goer's not more important than the sender. The sender's not more important than the goer. Each one makes the other functionable. Each one makes the other one where they can do their job. You know, if I'm sitting here with a bank full of money uh, and I'm wanting to send somebody to the mission fields, but nobody will go, well, then I can't fulfill my call as a sender. By the same token, if I'm sitting here as a missionary and, and wanting to go to Africa, to India, to around the world to preach the gospel with a uh, name the name of Jesus where it's not named and shine the light where the light's dim, but nobody will send me, then I can't fulfill my call as a goer. So it takes the goer and the sender, not one more important than the other, but they function together and that they too become one. They, they, they become a whole person. I had a lady many years ago up in the Dakotas tell me, she said, Brother Terry, if you'll go eat my worms for me, I'll send you money every month uh, so you can go and eat my worms and I'll just stay here and be a sender. But uh, find out what you are, a goer or a sender. Renee and I get to be both. Jackie and I always got to be both. Uh, we go all the time. Of course, we send to a lot more places than we go because we're missionary partners with people around the world too that we support, that we love, and that we help them do what they're doing. So goer or a sender makes no difference. You do what God called you to do as long as you're doing something. We can't opt out of the system. You have to be a missionary. You have to be involved in getting the gospel to the world.